In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the current conditions and, of course, diving into the upcoming pattern where there is a lot to talk about. It is a pretty interesting model run. We do have a tropical system, I think, a nor'easter, and a big New England snowstorm on the model run. So that's going to be interesting to take a look at. Also, the current conditions are looking quite interesting to me as well. We can tell where the trough is currently located, just like this. So we have warmer along the eastern seaboard here. Going to be another very, very warm. Almost feels like spring, I would say, is kind of what I've noticed along the eastern United States. We've had a cold fall so far, so I think what happens is, you know, it's been cold and now it's warm. So you kind of associate that with more like springtime since it's been cold. Uh, but now we see um, a lot of colder air for the west and the north central United States most likely as well being quite cold. As we take a look at the storminess, this is obviously probably catching everybody's attention. This big, nice looking storm system along the central United States. Uh, just a lot of frontal boundaries going on right here. A pretty strong low in the middle as well. Uh, and up in the northwest, we also have some frontal boundaries creating some impacts up there. And that's actually where we will start things off up here in the northwest. As you can see, Plenty of snowfall here for some of the northern Cascades and then some of the northern Rockies as well. Uh, we have some snowfall happening for a lot of these areas. So basically, elevation-based snowfall, which is not shouldn't be a surprise this time of year. Uh, we have rainfall happening in the lower elevations and even some heavier pockets in there at, at certain spots. I would say northern California, portions of eastern Oregon, and then even some of those isolated and scattered areas there heading on to coastal Washington are looking pretty heavy at this point as far as the precipitation is concerned. But speaking of heavy precipitation, the further east you go, the more heavy things are looking. On this northern area, we have mostly a warm front just like this. Uh, and it's probably more like up here with this precipitation. But really, the warm front is going to be all of these areas. And this is looking moderate to heavy as far as precipitation is concerned. And then uh, we have this cold front. Um, and I would say the cold front actually is probably here. Uh, I don't think it's all the way out here because it's not connected to the low, uh, but it's hard to say for certain. We have a heavier pocket of precipitation set up in here. It's very thin, but looks like the most intense pocket that we see anywhere really uh, is gonna be this pocket in here. Uh, looks like uh, Illinois, Iowa seeing pretty intense thunderstorms there. Uh, and then, as we can see, along the Gulf states all the way up into the Great Lakes, uh, we have this really thick line of moderate to heavy precipitation taking place. This was the pocket that was bringing the severe weather yesterday, and now it's bringing potential flooding, I would say, uh, for a lot of areas, because you can see that is a very thick area of some heavy precipitation in there, especially for Louisiana and Mississippi. But as you head northward as well for Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, but obviously the further south you go, the heavier this is. But also, the better equipped they are typically for flooding the further south you go. So, uh, it is kind of uh, some dynamic situations there for sure. And we can tell for the eastern United States, just like yesterday, there is just these isolated showers heading on shore, depending on where you're at. Uh, that definitely could be bringing a drizzle depending on your exact location. As you can see, they're all over the place for the eastern seaboard. So, they could bring a drizzle this morning. Uh, although it's a nice day, I would recommend getting outdoors uh, because days like this are probably numbered along the eastern United States. Uh, but watch out for those spotty, isolated drizzles, I would say. Now let's go ahead and move on and talk about the model guidance. Now here we are taking a look at some of this upcoming storminess. And as you can see, there is plenty going on. It looks pretty similar to what's currently going on because it is very similar to what's currently going on as we reach into... Uh, tomorrow afternoon, though, we can see a lot of the storminess lifts up into the eastern United States, and it's a lot more scattered about. going to be a little bit less major by the time we're reaching tomorrow. There will still be some snowfall out west, which we're going to see a lot of this in the upcoming pattern, by the way, as we reach into later into November. This is the time of year where the winter, the real winter-like conditions start to set in, especially for these western and northern regions, for sure. Uh, by the time we reach Monday afternoon, you can tell that a larger storm system moves in, as you can see. Uh, and this brings very widespread snowfall throughout California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, uh, and even up into the Dakotas. So many different states seeing some uh, snowiness with this uh, storm system that moves through the southern uh, western regions. 
Nevada, California area. We do have some scattered and isolated storming that's taking place down here for the Gulf states and the southeast states in general. Let's keep going with this towards uh, Tuesday afternoon, and we can see still a lot of snowfall taking place with this storminess out west, and a lot of the southwest seeing precipitation, which is good news usually. Uh, we see a storm system here. This is going to be interesting. Uh, we get a couple of these coastal storms uh, that uh, do some interesting things, but we see this one kind of move in, and then it's going to kind of turn around. So we'll see this take place. Um, it, it does a little uh, twist. There's two things going on here. We have this storm system here with a warm front over top, cold front underneath. And this allows for some cold air to start to finally move into the eastern United States. So we're going to see that take place. But also this system looks a little bit tropical to me. And it's going to do this type of a track. And it's going to bring snowfall too. According to this model at least. I'm saying it like it's for sure going to happen. But that, that is what we see here on this model run. Uh, not to say that that is for sure going to happen. But it is interesting. And it does combine with this cold front as well. So we have a whole lot of dynamics going on along the eastern seaboard. We'll see in a minute, though, that a ton of precipitation is expected with this. We do see that a positive PNA pattern is starting to set in now. So warm air out here, cold air finally surging into the central and eastern states. And we have this storminess happening along the coast. So things for the east are going to start to get really intense. We still have a lot of precipitation along the coast. And then we get this system strengthening 992 millibar low pressure center. And we have a big trough in the east here at this point. And it's going to combine with this. Uh, as we can see, this brings snowfall to states like New Jersey, southern New England, which for November is pretty interesting. Pretty interesting to say the least. We actually get a pretty major snowstorm for the very far eastern regions of New England on this model run. Not to say, again, this is for sure going to happen, but uh, it is interesting to see. 988 millibar low pressure centers are looking a lot stronger as well. Definitely some interesting dynamics going on here. And as we continue on, that finally does come to a close. We still have the trough here in the east here. Uh, by time we're reaching about 10 days from now, around the 15th here. Now, let's take a look at the total precipitation through the next 10 days, or 15 days. Here we are taking a look at it, and as you can see, we have a lot on the east coast, and we have a lot on the west coast there. Anywhere in the whites, we're seeing a, practically no precipitation. Your grays will be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues, half an inch to an inch. Your yellows, an inch to two inches. And then your reds, two to five inches of precipitation. Your browns, five to ten. And then your blues within the browns, which you see some of that for coastal Carolina, North Carolina that is, and then some there for California, Oregon, and Washington. That's going to be 10 to 15 inches of precipitation. Certainly a lot over a 10 to 15 day period. About an inch per day on average. If that does verify, which is very crazy to see. Total snowfall here, no surprise. There is some accumulating snowfall predicted here on this model run for uh, New England, which is very interesting. Obviously out west as well. If you're anywhere in the grays, we're expecting a dusting, if anything, according to this model run. Your blues, 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples, 6 to 10. Pinks, 10 to 20 inches. Your pastel blues, 20 to 30. Your pastel pinks, and then 30 to 48 inches plus. And then we see at the very bottom right corner of your screen, a max of 87.8 inches somewhere in there, which I would say is maybe for the Sierra Nevadas, possibly, or uh, for British Columbia. Uh, I can't tell exactly which, but somewhere in there is seeing a lot of snowfall. Probably both are seeing a lot of snowfall, but somewhere in there is seeing 80 inches plus, which is crazy to think about. Now, as we take a look here at the temperature pattern real quickly, we'll see how things progress. We kind of stay in this negative PNA pattern, which I'm not going to spend too much time explaining it. We've explained it in the past videos a lot, but it's colder temperatures out here. Uh, so we see a negative PNA, colder temperatures for the West. And what this causes is warm air to surge into the eastern United States. That's a negative PNA. That's what we're in. That's what we've been in. As we continue on, we can see that we get this cold blast around the 11th, 12th time frame. That's going to be Friday, Saturday time frame there. Uh, we get this really cold blast into the eastern United States. Uh, and what we see build after that is a bit of a positive PNA. Uh, around this time especially. So a positive PNA is warmer temperatures out west, and what this causes is the opposite, the cold air to move into the east, just like this. Uh, and what's interesting is over time, we see things get really mild here, as you can see, kind of neutral for the east 
warm out west still, but pretty neutral for the east. We'll have to see if this verifies. This is 300 plus hours out, so take it with a grain of salt, but certainly something to pay attention to. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. We will have more information coming up regarding those coastal storms. I think that's the most interesting thing I'm seeing on the model run, so certainly something to keep track of. Be sure to subscribe for more weather-related content. We do upload every single day. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts, and I will see you guys in the next video.